all these different things like you start to piece together and it's like okay well if he if i'm beautifully and wonderfully made then there's certain things that he gave me that like were just instruments now i use the instruments however i did back then but now i have the opportunity to use the instruments in a different way so by the time i started fellowshipping with with hip hop and like rapping like i had just put that to the side just entirely like indefinitely in my mind just because a lot of the stuff that uh was just so close to it for me but as far as like being creative i was like i was still you know creating and doing things you know i was doing plays uh um you know still drawing here and there or whatever um but you know by the time i had that conversation with my friend you know it really showed me that like I still, even in the five years that I wasn't rapping, I was still rapping. It was just to myself. Mm. I was still, I was still writing stuff, but it was just between me and God. Mm. You know what I mean? I was. What's going on, fam? It's your brother Lawrence here. It's another episode of Watch God Work. In every episode, we get the distinct pleasure and honor to speak to a brother or sister that's talk, doing exceptional work in every field of human endeavor. And they share their God stories, the ways in which God has been at work in their life and the ways in which God has been at work in their work. And today, it is no different, y'all. Obviously, Bay Area is in the building, at least by virtue of where they broadcast them from. But we got an amazing amazing king um and, and when i think of you know it, it, you talk about work art balance um talk about the importance of being bringing your full self uh, mm. I, you give music i think that talks about lifestyle that often is not talked about <laughs> you're <Yeah>. married <laughs> you yeah. work you right. are creating, you want to change lives. You feel there's a call on your life that's tied to art. You believe in the power of ownership, mm. owning the message, the medium. You honor the people who are along the journey with you. You are a multifaceted child of God who allows all of it to shine and you feel no shame in any part of it. These mm. are some of the things I think about when I've learned about your story through one of my good sisters, Tiffany. And it was it was that just was such dead. a great, great joy. And so obviously, man, I can't do your story justice as much as I may read, as much as I may watch, as much as I may have listened. <laughs> uh, nah, man, you pretty much got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so as we do in the tradition here, who is Ace? Call me Ace, legit online, Patterson. <laughs> <laughs> um. And I'm just, I'm just someone that's trying to use their time wisely mm. while I still miss out of eternity. Um, I didn't ask to be here, and yet I'm here. And I've gone through all kind of experiences from being homeless to owning property to having loved ones to losing loved ones, um, you know, being the first one with the U.S. passport and mm. going abroad and realizing that it ain't all about being a U.S. citizen, you know, <laughs> yep. all, you know, all these right experiences, um, you know, being the one of only people that look like me in a room, uh, being one of the first to go to school and graduate college, business school, you, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, 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 you know, I, I wasn't even, I wasn't even trying to get saved, mm -hmm. you know? I like even, you know, walking in with the Lord, it wasn't like I, uh, I mean, I was Christianed when I was 10 months old, which is cool to look at as like a baby picture, but you know, the, the Lord was <laughs> kind of like watching me from afar knowing like i i'm gonna get them soon mm -hmm. but i lived all kind of lifestyles that had i known bro <laughs> bro bro why you had me for that? Why, <laughs> where was you but he, he he knew what he was doing and and those experiences and and the everything that i've gone through it just all becomes this testimony and part of the story that i end up sharing you know with people 
through my words, through my actions. Um, I'm not perfect by any means, but all glory to God, the fact that I'm still here when I could have been arrested, I could have been, you know, killed. I could have gone this way, gone that way, you name it. And I'm at where I'm at right now. There has to be a reason for it. Mm. And so, so long as I have this time, I'm going to keep living out the reason. I'm going to keep sharing the reason. Mm. That's, that's who I am. Brother, I mean, I think you even breaking down these whys, I think it, it's, um, it, it seems clear why and how you're energized to do all that you do. And I'm going to start there, right? <laughs> because I, I, mm. I think me, I went to business school, went to business school, and typically, <laughs> you know, beyond the recruiter, it's just like, we need to get <laughs> right. you here. <laughs> right. I right. need to pay back these right. loans. I need to. Right. Right. <laughs> so when did you first get a sense that God put more in you beyond a capacity to think and to be great, but like that needed to come out and how it came out would not necessarily fit in the boxes that we're normally told that you must fit into? When did you start to sense that this was something beyond you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's just one of those blessings that I didn't even realize it was a blessing at the time. Mm. Growing up, you know, sleeping on floors with, with my family, not having food to eat, and my mom telling us, you know, you're not poor, you're just broke. Mm -hmm. you, you might not have money, but you have other kind of resources, so use your brain, use your, use your talent. You know, I, I was drawing before anything, and she was like, okay, well, what is that story? So she would, have, she, at first, cause I couldn't write, you know, she'd write the stories. I'd tell her the stories, but then once I was able to read and write, she was like, write your own stories. Mm -hmm. And, and from there, you know, into acting from there, it went into, you know, monologues and poetry and, you know, growing up in the inner city, that wasn't cool. So I threw music underneath it and, you know, I was doing music, <laughs> I was rapping, uh, you know, just <laughs> putting, technical you know literal alliterations and all that kind of stuff <laughs> on these dope hard kicks and such but like that that was that was just kind of the upbringing and it wasn't even like we thought i mean we we was practicing pretending to be like the next boys to men jackson five you know in you know my older sister hitting all the harmonies and stuff like that that was how we grew up but um it was always something that i had and it was always that thing where it was like, no one can tell me that I can't do it because my entire life has been fighting statistics. My entire life has been going against what other people thought I could and couldn't do given where I came from. I'm very thankful for the people that we've had in our lives to, to you know, keep us strong when, you know, times really got rough. They uh, helped to really show me that my life matters mm. and that it's okay what I have in my head. Now that, you know, you got tons of people that's like, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that. Like I went to Columbia, majored in economics because, you know, I ain't know nothing about no Ivy League schools. I just wanted to go to New York because that's the birthplace of hip hop. I'm trying to be a rapper. <laughs> and, but, you know, it's like you go be a businessman, right? So I, I major in economics. I got a D my first semester. I was like, I'm about to just drop out. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't meant for me, mm. you know? Like it just cause where, where, who do I think I am coming from where I am to even think that I'm supposed to be going to college. So I yeah. thought it was like, oh, you know, what well, meant for me, right? But, you know, found found a different way to to switch the major, do anthropology, start writing again. Shout out anthropology, kind of, shout out Margaret Mead yeah, and yeah, them. Yeah, shout shout right? out, shout out. <laughs> yeah, social culture anthropology, you know, I got to write about like you know, why, why, why do black people like Kung Fu movies? Like, you know, why, <laughs> what does it mean to be a Jamaican born in America? You know, like all that, basically my life, mm -hmm. <laughs> but in like college form. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, it really came down to being able to leverage, you know, those skills and those strengths that I had, but even navigating all the difficulties, it was like, no one thinks I'm going to succeed anyway. Mm -hmm. So just do it regardless right um so that i've always had that um just growing up and then uh going to business school it was less about oh let me because i stopped rapping after college like literally I, I i came to know the lord like my second to last semester before graduating so 
by the time I'm about to graduate, like I done cut my hair. I'm like not wearing my Aaron as much no more. Like I, I'm like not trying, I'm trying to dissociate because I, I was a crazy kid, man. I don't know. I don't want to talk about it no more, but like <laughs> going back to business or like going back to school, going to business school um, and, and connected with a homie of mine back home, he brought up and he's not even a, a, a follower of Christ per se, but he was like, yo, like you have this gift, you know, and, and you're really good at it but you don't want to use it. Why don't you want to use it? Mm. And I gave him all kinds of reasons. Like, you know, I'm about to, like you said, business school, straight lane, I'm about to be a consultant. I'm about to get married. I'm about to write, have healthcare. I'm about to, you know, <laughs> not chasing money. I'm not chasing girls. I'm not chasing, you know, what I uh, thought of as, you know, hip hop. Right. I was like, well, that's not, that's not me. I don't, I don't rap like them. I don't want to rap like them, you know? And, and he was just like, those are all good reasons to like, do it anyway, you know, and he really helped to remove a lot of the, the stereotypes and stigmas that I had placed, not only on the craft, but on myself. Mm. Um, and he was like, it, if you have a gift and you were given a gift, it'd be a sin not to use it. And when he said that, Ooh. it kind of like, you know what I mean? It shook me up. I was like, who are you to tell me that? Right. But I mean, like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Every right. And so I sat with that. And I was like, dang, okay, well, what could that look like? Hmm. And again, you know, my dad didn't go past the eighth grade, right? And so I've always had this sense of like, as I navigate life, I'm thankful for like people that I can find these days, right? Like I'm, I'm thankful for like mentorship and things like that. But growing up, it was very much just like, yo, I'm gonna figure it out because mm -hmm. I have to. That's one thing that my dad taught me, right? Is like survival is the name of the game. So I'm gonna figure it out and, and rest in peace, Auntie Tuss, but she mm -hmm. would always tell me to learn something every day. So if I don't know how to do it, I've never done it before. I'm not gonna be like, oh, oh well, then it can't happen. I'm gonna figure out how. Mm -hmm. And so- that really, that really, those are like things I didn't even realize God was like instilling in me mm -hmm. until I was able to put it all together. Once I put it all together, I was like, oh, I bet this is what I'm going to do. Fam. Whether or not people think that. <laughs> Fam, this is, this is, it, it, it's such a beautiful narrative, right? Right. Because you don't know as it's happening, how it's, you know, preparing you. You don't know how it's shaping you, how it's molding you accordingly. Nah. And, but, but even in this, right, you know, like, you know, whether you're from, you know, Kingston, where you're from. No matter what you're, it's like, it's a beautiful thing, right? You know, coming from family immigrants for me, right? It's like, all right, we want you to survive. Both of them were entrepreneurs on my, on my end, but it's just like, but we, we like, but you know, once you do what you need to do and you're gifted, but also I want you to survive. Like, and music is yeah. <laughs> right. And so uh, how is your faith? Cause a lot of times people say, I, I demonstrate my faith through my commitment to X. But it seems like your view was my commitment is to bringing everything God has given me and push it outward. Like, what was that walk with God to say, all right, God, I'm doing music and it's not me not lacking faith to go all in with this, as opposed to saying I'm doing music, but I'm still going to maintain my career. And that is mm. actually an equal show of faith. Like, what was the conversation with God around just your mental space around keeping both versus one and that demonstrating your faith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a dope question. Um, you know, it could, it could partly be cause I wasn't, I, 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 I learned how to walk with the Lord primarily just from reading the word. Mm. Like when I was saved, I was literally in the middle of a party <laughs> and that's all we got to say about it. But like, I, I like went back to my room and I was, I was looking at this book called a Holy Bible and I was just going through and, you know, kind of throwing my finger on some verses like, oh snap, I'm I'm condemned, I'm going to hell, whatever. But like what what was really happening in my spirit was um being able to understand who God is and what he actually wants for his people. Mm -hmm. After after I committed my life to him, after I already said, you know, I believe that you came, you died and you resurrected for my sins to to reunite me with you, to reunite you with me, so we can have a relationship and I could be used for your kingdom. Mm -hmm. Like after I like I said that, but I didn't know what that meant. Mm. And so as I'm reading about, you know, who this Holy Spirit is, what that actually means, oh, this is why I feel bad when I do this thing and why, like, I feel this all of a sudden urge to not partake in certain things that I was very much partaking in prior, mm. you know, just like out of nowhere. Like, it wasn't people telling me, like, oh, do this, don't do this. It was me walking with the Lord myself and mm. understanding that. 
you know, and, and one of the things that happened during this journey, by the time I started uh, fellowshipping corporately and, and, you know, uh, serving in the community and outreach, mission work, this, that, and the third, by the time I was doing that, I had this understanding that it wasn't that the Lord hated me mm. or like, you know, the way that I used to be, uh, it was the, the things that were going literally against his kingdom. But me, the child that he made, like he loves me. He's always loved me. He'd mm. been loved me. That's why he kept me up to this point. That time where I almost went to jail when I was seven for shoplifting, like he spared my life then too. You know what I mean? Like, even though I know what he was doing, that could have gone crazy left. Right. Mm-hmm. And so like all these different things, like you start to piece together and it's like, okay, well, if he, if I'm beautifully and wonderfully made, then there's certain things that he gave me that like were just instruments. Mm. Now I use the instruments however I did back then, but now I have the opportunity to use the instruments in a different way. Mm. So by the time I started fellowshipping with, with hip hop and like rapping, like I had just put that to the side just entirely, like indefinitely in my mind, just because a lot of the stuff that uh, was just so close to it for me. Mm. But as far as like being creative i was like i was still you know creating and doing things you know i was doing plays uh um you know still drawing here and there or whatever um but you know by the time i had that conversation with my friend you know it really showed me that like i still even in the five years that i wasn't rapping i was still rapping it was just to myself mm. i was still I was still writing stuff, but it was just between me and God. Mm. You know what I mean? I was still doing poetry, but, you know, it was it was in my, like, private form. I was still journaling every single day and, and, you know, writing stuff, but I wasn't showing it to nobody. Mm. You know what I mean? And so by the time it was like, yo, like, but this right here, like, you could also be giving. It was like, all right, well, then, if I'm going to live holistically as myself, then that's what I'm called to do. Mm. And it hit different in that conversation because again like there was five years i needed that five years to not do it because by the time i revisited it i was able to revisit it not feeling like the kid with the braids going over here doing x y and z like i i felt like a completely different person you know what i mean just from the new experiences that i had going to you know providencia colombia and like you know, serving as as like a, a guest pastor at a church, you know, for a mission trip, you know what I mean? Like helping to, you know, really dig deep in the community and not just abroad, but like in New York where I was living too, you know? Mm. So it was like, I had those different experiences where it was like, I was very comfortable with myself mm. already. Mm. Uh, and so just adding that extra element, it was like, I right, like time to just bring that forth too, you mm. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, this is so dope, bro. You know, and, and we started off part of the thing I said, like the, the, you have a sense of security of self. And I think to be able to take a path that you have that was for you, and it, is, it takes a lot of courage, right? The reality is it's like, but given your kind of upbringing, what you've navigated, it was, it was, it was, it, 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 you couldn't see yourself going left or right. It had to be that this was gonna go. It, I am I am always always curious about then often when it's still when it comes to music, right? Because you could still say, all right, I'm speaking to myself versus I need to get this out in the world. I need to share. When did you right. really get that wink from God where it was almost like, you know, Jay, you know, <laughs> like Jay on keep going, he, you know, on what we do. He's like, keep going. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like where God really <laughs> was just like, oh, wow. OK, God, now that. You know, my boy put the battery on me. He he reminded me, he put the mirror on me yeah. to see myself. But then it yeah. went be even beyond your boy where you're like, yo, oh, all right, God, I get it. I'm I'm still going with this. Like, when did God really breathe onto this even more? It's wild, too, because I had read a book around the time. I can't even remember the name of the book, but it was basically like God in the arts. Mm. And... um. It was just one of those, uh, I don't think that's the name of the book at all, but like that was just the general content mm-hmm. of it. And, you know, that's how I learned about C.S. Lewis. That's how I learned about uh, uh, Chronicle of Narnia and, you know, all that uh, Lord of the Rings and right. Um, and so understanding that, I was like, oh, I don't <laughs> <laughs> like that. That exists, you know, um, because I'm telling you, like I was very like 
I, I didn't grow in an environment where I was like, okay, you watch Christian movies and listen to Christian music and read Christian books and go to Christian school. And I did go to a Catholic school for two years, but that's just because they they fed your boy for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, good, it was good. like, um, <laughs> but you know, it, it, like these are the the I, that that wasn't my lifestyle, right? And so. I'm a learner, you know, again, like I said, so like, I'm just reading just for the sake of reading. And it's just like, there are things that like, I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn about businesses, missions, um, you know, understanding that like Jesus did a lot of his preaching in the marketplace, like 95% of his preaching was not in the synagogues. It wasn't in the churches. It was with the people that's living real life, doing real day to day stuff. And a lot of believers aren't in the, in the church you know, doing a uh, uh, service there, they're out and about living real life. And they are equally called, you know, to be saints and to be holy priests and to go out and do what you're supposed to be doing, what we're supposed to be doing. Right. And so it just like having that understanding already, that was already foundational. Right. Mm. Um, when it came to the music, it was like, well, what, what about this? is like the value because i have no value like i'm not trying to make money off god mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i i'm not trying to i don't need i like i don't need to you know what i mean like that's not even a, a desire but it's also not like a requirement mm -hmm. for me to live my life mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it, it doesn't it doesn't make me any like i've i've preached before i've served before i've done these things before like i don't need any of I'm all, it's ironic when people look at my resume, they might assume like, oh, I care about these like brands and stuff. Oh, you went to that school, you worked at these companies. But literally from the very beginning, I've always been like, it don't matter because I'm not, like, I know what it's like to have nothing, mm. right? I know that at the end of the day, we all die, right? And so at the end of the day, like, am I living a life of significance? That's all mm. that matters to me. All these different things are just keys, you know what I mean? Because like, Shout outs to the to the the school that didn't let me in the first time that I applied because I was too rambunctious. I was trying to go to lower school, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm this kid from the hood, real hyperactive, just jumping around, I had no home training. So my mom whooped me, had to go back again for middle school uh uh recruitment, got in this time because I, I was able to control myself, right? But you know, they gave me a full ride scholarship to go to this school that was 15 minutes away, but a drastically different environment where like they got deer that walk around in, in the day eating grass and there's houses like real big mansions and stuff, you know, but 15 minutes away, and, you know, broken buildings, you got the jail right next to the school. Like that's where I'm from. Right. Mm -hmm. But like I had a full ride opportunity to go to that school. Right. And so that created a whole different opportunity for me to go explore things and learn things and all this kind of stuff. But what I'm saying is that like, I have, I have a life that, is inspiring to people, but why is it inspiring? And why has God given me like the privilege to keep living it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so like, for me, what it really came down to is, I'm just gonna share the testimony. I'm just gonna share my life. You know, people, you know, people wanna pick my brain <laughs> every day. So let me just share, you know, my brain. Let me share my mind. Let me share my heart. Let me share my soul. You know, it's partly cathartic. It's, it's, it's all real. Like I have no desire or interest or time to just like fabricate things for the sake of anything other than, cause like, honestly, brethren, like I could just not do this and live a very complacent, chill lifestyle. Me and my wife is doing, you know, our thing, grow our family and then, you know, raise them and then we die. And then that's that. Right. But like, I want to, I want to live mission oriented. And so just as how I went to business school as missions, just as how I, you know, the, the, the things that I partake in and don't partake in for me is mission oriented with everything that I do. I want it to be mission oriented. Mm -hmm. And what I remember doing on my mission trips was sharing my testimony. That was like a very like key part of it. And so that's really all this is <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, you yeah, I'll, 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 I'll let, I need to let that rock, bro. Because I, I think, the fact that you talk about this being a story and sharing your testimony that being important, it makes sense. And it's it's very evident, right? Especially how you talk about c community, right? And the kind of high grade society and what you've done with that. Because if anybody's heard you speak about this, <laughs> you speak like a tactician, right? You speak like, 
you know, it's very much like, cool, I'm going to check this. What's the analytics? I mean, when they come in at, okay, cool, this person out there, like, you know, or shoot, I'm not right, cool. I'm going to hit them with the text. That's a call to action for them. Boom, boom, boom. And like, cool, I'm only going to get a percentage of them. Look, I'm going to chop and screw this up so they can see that. I want them to see the entire thing. I'm a, but also it's about, okay, where you want to be, where you don't think you're going to be, where it is your audience. What are you really trying to share? You really take it seriously. And I think that's the true essence of community building, but it's almost like an under shepherd. Like with every person, mm-hmm. it's like every person, mm-hmm. if, if my, if, it, if God has put me here and he's giving me a sphere of influence to share my story and that my story will ultimately inspire them or do something because they'll see his story in that, then I need to take this seriously. I got to figure out how I'm Absolutely. messaging, how I'm cultivating community. And so, I, you know, is that, have, have you, have you viewed it from a kingdom perspective? Like, how do you think about community? Yeah. What are the questions you ask yourself as you think about how to cultivate and bring people along in the work you're doing? No, absolutely. All the time. I, 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 there's there's nothing about it that I don't see it as right. Like mm-hmm. that's it, it's what it is. Um, you know, I'm very conscious of how I'm treating the people that care about the stuff that I'm putting out, you know, like literally, <clears throat> literally, man, I'm not pulling it up in time. Ah, let's see if I can. Somebody uh, sent me a message yesterday um on on a music video that i just dropped um said yo ace one love here from here in south philly i gotta give you mad respect on that track the lyrics are off the hook and they resonate with the background beat and they just came off from the realest of reels ain't nobody special but if there's somebody that's on the way to the top i just heard for the first time today his name is call me ace okay cool Dope. But then he says, I'm a paramedic. So in my downtime between taking care of patients, I'm always looking for something new to listen to, something to read, something new to watch to engage my mind and intellect. So I can tell you definitely sum that up. I smash the button like button. Best of luck. I look forward to hearing all your new stuff soon. And I responded to him genuinely. Mm-hmm. Right. I respond. I'm not looking at it like, oh, that's cool. Dope. Look at me. I'm popping. I tell him like, I'm so thankful that you took the time out of your busy day as a paramedic to tell me that, you know, this resonates with you. I'm glad that it could be incorporated in your life. I'm always curious to hear where my music travels mm. through. I'm very glad that it reached you. Thank you for being on board. Welcome aboard. Let's stay, let's stay in touch, right? And let's, and let's keep the conversation going together, mm. right? Just let them know that like, I hear him, I see him, I appreciate it. Another one, same day, it, IG message. Uh, I just wanna share that your music's been really encouraging for me as I study for the bar exam this summer, right? Uh, another person hit me up. Yo, I was looking for nonviolent Zen music. <laughs> and I came <laughs> Thank you. Right. I have someone from South. I'm not going to read all this. Th- that's just from yesterday. Right. But like I'm getting these from South Africa. I'm getting these from London. I'm getting these from from Canada. I'm getting these from Tokyo, translating them, Russia, translating them. Right. Where I don't even know how they're coming across it. But when I see the impact that it's having, that's what that's what's that's top of mind for me. That's what's the most important. And so if you are engaging with it, cause anyone could be a casual listener, but if you're taking the time out to now engage with me and be an engaged, like uh, supporter, I don't want to call you fan. Cause even like fan sounds like, right. Mm-hmm. But like, if, if you're going to be an engaged supporter, like I just want to show you that I care mm-hmm. that I see you, that you mean something to me. Like I've said this from when I had zero supporters that every single person matters. Before I started this, I said, even if it's just for one person, Lord, if this is what you want me to do it for, then it's fine with me, Mm. right? So like, I'm not, like, what am I chasing, right? Like that has to come from within. Mm. I asked this um, last week, you know, work our balance, like you mentioned, uh, early, like every week I, I share, um, a newsletter, just some, some thoughts, some insights on like, you know, what are some questions that you can ask to help you like have this sense of balance. And really that balance has to come from within, you know what I mean? Cause anyone can have the work and the art and the family and the, this and the da, 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 but the balance is, is what, what's your core, what's your foundation. Right. And so one of those questions that I asked, right. To understand what is your, why is like, why are you doing this? Yeah, like, well, why are you really doing this? Like, is it for money? Is it for fame? Is it for people's attention? Is it for people's opinion? Because for every, you know, 10 people that's like, yo, I love your music. I'm gonna have the occasional person that's like, yo, that's trash, right? But what, like, am I defined? I'm not defined by any of these, mm-hmm. right? Like, I, I, I yeah, I hand selected three like dope ones to read on this podcast. I could have pulled up the like, yo, this is trash one for you, <laughs> right? But like, it, it, it's not about, 
that. Like I'm not doing it for people's affirmation. Like I'm doing it for how am I connecting them and why am I connecting to them? And, and this is what I want to continue to have in the forefront. So when I'm bringing folks in, you know, I, I, I want to nurture that relationship. I, I want them to realize that even when there's thousands of people that are hitting me up for the same thing, these are thousands of individual people, mm. not not some like data metric, mm. right? <laughs> and then like, and I, and I, and I, and I understand the value of, of, um, you know, in the industry that I'm in where it's like, okay, well, if you have these numbers and it looks a certain way, we can like open up the door for you here and this, that, and da, 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 da. But, you know, I, I also see like a bunch of people with like fake followers, right? Like a bunch of, bunch of fake followers and little engagement. And it's like, who are you talking to? Mm. Right. Like that, that, like, that's literally the most important part. So it's like, who, who are you engaging with? And like, what are you doing this for? Cause like, I don't want to feel like I'm popping in my head. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I could care less. Smoke and mirrors. Literally care. Smoke and mirrors. I, yo, I have other things to do. <laughs> I like, I don't even need to look at my own mirror. I don't have time. Like I might have something in my teeth right now. I literally don't know. I don't have time. Right. But like, if, 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 who I'm, I might have a thousand followers, but if my engagement rate is 30, then that means that this is a very engaged population. I need to be communicating with them thoroughly, mm -hmm. right? That's how I think about these numbers. Mm -hmm. Are these people or not, mm -hmm. right? And if I'm connecting with people, I want those people to know that they are seen, that they are loved, that they are appreciated and welcome aboard because that's exactly how I felt when I was saved. Mm -hmm. So who am I, right? To treat people like, ah, you know, uh, whatever, y'all better buy it. <laughs> you know, no, like what I can fake it good, you know, like give me some time to like put on a character, right? But just like treating people that like spend their time, their money for you to support you and you don't even care about them one little bit. Nah, yo. Brother, you, 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 that's you, you, you put an arson on feet, man. <laughs> you, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is ever blazing on the feet, man. Like this, you could talk about this in terms of institutions and how people treat their customers and people who have supported and believe in them and believe in a small business. You could talk about this as it relates to institutional church, right? And like, I'm just a number in here and though we filled up, but like pandemic happened and like, I didn't get any phone calls. Like, you know, do you care about mm. me to mm. people who actually believe they actually resonate with the message that you're sharing that the why, and then they reach out to you and what that means it, it, bro, it, even I don't, and I don't even think this is somebody with any any greed in mind. I think sometimes we get because of just the ethos of this time, you get so caught up at at, at at the outside and forget about the inside. You forget about the why and the followers and the things. And you're like, you know, these are people, right? You know, yeah. somebody took some time out of their life, right? You know that you were given some oil of influence and they reached out to you and they could have done something else. Brother, I, right. I think this is that it is it is it is a message. Still, I, I think practically I have to ask the question of I do think you talk about this being a journey, right? This work art balance, that this holistic view, right? I think but the reality mm -hmm. for so many people is just like, man, it's not even it's not even balanced. It feels like equilibrium, dog. Like <laughs> because you know, some days it's just like, man, I, shoot, I'm being a horrible husband, right? Because my mind is so here. I need to write this thing down and yeah. I'm just not attentive. And I'm like, I'm this. I I'm, start that like, way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? saying? Like, so uh, how, how do you even tactically, with your rhythm with God and everything that God has given you in your life, just how do you tactically just put this in rhythm, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Man, just you even asking that question just got me so excited to say that even on your best days, they're still not perfect on this side of eternity. Mm. So we can't expect it. Like it's just something in the way that you asked it, because it's like literally like you could just you could just swear that like everything is lined up and then just something in the nature of life will happen and it can affect your mood. It can affect your trajectory. You could come up with your plans and all of a sudden like boom, that happened. And you're like, well, now I have this thing to deal with. And it's just like, it's just, it's just normal. It's just a normal process of life. Like literally not too long ago, like I was out of work because I was on bereavement leave and like everything looked great. You know, when my wife and I were uh, in Hawaii celebrating our five year anniversary, you know, like, oh, okay, we got the job and we got the vision and this is our goals for the rest of the year. Da, 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 da. And you come back and it's like, pow. What 
what goal? <laughs> mm -hmm. What goal with that person? <laughs> what 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 dream did you thought you had, right? And so it's just like you you just don't know what the future holds, number one. But number two, like this side of eternity is all about like from the way that I understand the the scripture, right? Like becoming sanctified towards perfection without reaching perfection on this side. Mm -hmm. You know, like I personally don't believe that we will see perfect because we're, we're human living in such a pain stricken world and there's always going to be something, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't mean that we quit. Right. Like that, like we, we, we can't grow if we don't strain and push and, and right. Like we're trying to lift weights to gain muscle. Like we can't be like, Oh man, I'm not going to lift 600 pounds before I die. So I'm not going to lift this 20. Like, mm -hmm. nah, like if that's your goal is the 600, then you go from 25 to 50 to hundred to right. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's the goal. So you still push towards the goal. Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, discouraged by like whether or not I'm gonna hit the 600, but I will say that there will be some, some days when I'm sick and I can't make it to the gym that week. There will be days where I break my arm and I now can't do the curls, right? There will be days where like, wow, my mind's really not in the game, but I still have to go to the gym and lift these weights. Like that, that's the reality. Like my mind's never always never cloudy and you know, my body's always in shape and this and then I'm just using that analogy because mm -hmm. hopefully it's understandable yes, it as far as just like, you have all these different things at play. Like, yeah, there will be days where like my wife will have to sit me down and be like, I just want you to know that I feel like I haven't seen you in the past week and you know, your mind's over da 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 da. And like, I just want to make sure that you're here. <laughs> like, I want to make sure that like, we're good. Da, 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 da. Uh, there might be times, right. Where your boss will sit you down and be like, Hey, I just, I feel like I've asked for this thing. Like maybe two more times than I wanted to. I just want to make sure, are you here? Right. There'll be some days where like, you know, your supporters will hit you up and they'll be like, yo, where's that music? I haven't seen you on IG, you know, da, 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 da. like, they're, like, I can't see how it'll all be perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, there, there, now there are some days, right, where like, <laughs> like the time just felt right that <laughs> Sunday, and like, I love you. your wife's like, dang, date night on me, right? And like, your music's popping. Like, there will be those days for sure. I don't want to sound like like every day is just a struggle, mm -hmm. but like, every day is not perfect as well, right? So I don't think that balance means perfect. I just think balance means commitment and intention. Mm. So if you what your priorities are. If you understand what you're committing to and you're building that discipline uh, and intentionality towards everything that you're doing, then you know how to address those things when it's time, mm. right? Like, you know how to address <clears throat> when things don't go your way, when obstacles go into the road, when you break your arm, you're not like, wow, my dreams are over. You're like, I just need X weeks to repair, right? Like, when, when you know, things are kind of slowing down at the job, you know, instead of being like, all right, well, dang, that's my fault, like, I'm horrible at my job. Be like, all right, let me switch focus and like pay attention here. Let me switch focus. Da, 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 da. Let me leverage my time that I have that I do have and just use it accordingly. So that's, that's how I view mm. it. I, I'm lying to you. If I told you that my life was perfect. brother, I, I, I love <laughs> this man is the already, but not yet, man. And you know what that actually yeah. looks like. Perfection won't come back until perfection returns. And there was only one. Ooh. Right. Um, and so I think this is, this is the Bali. It was funny when you said everyday struggle. I was thinking about that, that big um, but um, I don't want to live no more. Uh, uh, but I, I do think right. hmm, I have to ask this question, man, as we even wrap up, man, like I um, what you're saying, is such gold, man. It is right. I think everyone's trying to navigate that. I think so much of what the weight that people carry often is feeling like they're falling short. They're falling short. It's like, well, you were meant to fall short. It's like, you know, but you're still, you, you know, but, but there's also yeah. some part of like, where are you going? None of us know. Right. But is for you, yeah. the, the, is, is the long game to the extent you share, I need to do what I need to do so I could share these messages about my life beyond the, even the, even the ethos of out of office, but just like, I want, I just want to, I just think I, I want to be able to do this more. Is that the long game and get yourself in a position to be able to do that freelo? Or are you like, you know what? 
I actually, I'm not even interested in that. I'm not trying to just stack what I need, put these things into equities and the assets that I need. And so once I'm able to get out of there, I put the, the, the deuces up to YouTube and be like, no moonlighting clause. And it, it's like, it, like, where are you trying to go? And what message do you still need? You feel you need to get out there? So like, it, 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 I have to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I really, you know, someone the other day asked me what my five-year goals are and it's so hard for me to think further than six months <laughs> because I just know how real life works mm. and it, it just doesn't it doesn't pan out god never <laughs> like listened to my wish list and gave it to me the way that I thought I wanted it mm but he's always heard the cries of my heart and provided me exactly what I needed beyond what I could have even asked for. Hey. So <laughs> everything that I've gone through to even as I see the music grow the way that it's grown and my like corporate career growing the way that it's grown, it's literally just been because of him because I've had visions <laughs> that I won't entertain us with and he's like, no, nah, I'm going to do this instead. I'm going to whip this up instead. I'm going to put you on TV over here. You don't need to wait until you have X, Y, and Z to do it. I'm going to just make this happen right now. I'm going to make this person over here hear about you from this person that don't know you so they can reach out to you and ask you to do this thing right now. And I'm going to have this happen. And boom, you're going to have a commercial, right? Like all these different things. And I'm just like, <laughs> how, how am I supposed to plan something like that, mm. right? So I, I have desires. You know, I have ambition. Um, but I, I try my best not to be restrained by them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Instead, I just, I cry out to the Lord, you know, I, I, I pray, I do my journals. I, I, I do the work, you know what I mean? Like I, I, I do the work. Um, but I'm also aware that it's not like there's things, there's things that literally I'll like work towards for it won't happen. But the thing that I didn't work as much as the thing that I was working for, because I was like, if I put in this work, it will equate to the thing versus this one is like, I'm doing the work, but you know, I'm not putting any like extra thing on it. Gotta be like, I'm gonna use that one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it up here. Right. And so it's just like, I'm just learning more and more, man. Every single day. It's just like, <sighs> I have dreams, man. And the Lord knows, which is why we're even talking the way that we're talking about the concepts that we're talking. Mm. So it it really just, you know, I'm not, I'm not holding myself to them. He knows what they are. And I feel like he gave them to me. And it's just a matter of like, when he's ready, will I be ready? And that's really all it is. Bruh, you, 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 we, we started this conversation. I talked about freedom, you know, this theme of freedom, I feel like we're ending mm-hmm. the conversation around freedom because that's free. Uh, mm. I think that's the that's the invitation. I think that we all get. You know, many of the people who listen to this are people who went to business school, executives, people that you know that you and I are colleagues and people. You know, some mm-hmm. believe in God, many don't, right? But they're just intrigued by the stories. But I think there's something to be said about freedom: the freedom to not worry and have the anxiety of I don't know what's next. I don't know how things are going to work out. I don't know what piece that I'm holding up as a plan is going to come together and which one's going to drop. I don't know which one you're going to put the fire on it and the oil on it, which one you're not. I don't know, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. And, and, and honestly, and honestly, exactly to that point, right? Like we in our, in our, in our humanness, we'll worry about those. Like we will worry about what tomorrow holds. We'll worry about, you know, will this thing actually come to fruition? We will worry about those things. And like, I will worry about those things. And what happens when I worry about those things? I spend time with God about it. That's how I handle it, right? My wife and I recently just, you know, fasted for uh, for a week over some stuff just to really like, if it's, if it's getting too much more than just like the daily, right? Like uh, worries or pressures or anxieties or whatever. All right, let's, let's round it up. Let's. Let's let's recenter, you know, let's recalibrate mm. and get to that place where exactly like you said, yo, like we're free in him. Like we don't really even need anything else. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean, like, do I feel like I've exhausted every story? I don't know. Every time I write a song, I'm like, dang, yo, I can't go anymore. And then all of a sudden I'll, I'll write another song. I just wrote another song yesterday and just like, dang, yo, I can't go anymore. You know, <laughs> like, it just, like, oh, you only have one reasonable right? doubt, man. You only have one reasonable doubt, but this keeps going. <laughs> right, 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 right. And then, and then you just write another and then you're just like, dang, right. And so you're just like, 
it, it's it's less about the right versus the um let me put that pressure on myself to write the next reasonable doubt mm. right you know, it's a different mindset it's a completely different mindset versus like okay i'm a dry, i'm a write this thing up i'm gonna put it together duh, 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 duh. it might not be reasonable doubt but it might be blueprint mm. right or like something you know so it's just like less about the the actual thing and it's more just like where how am i centered and exactly to your point, once once we feel that centeredness, yo, at least for me, I, I couldn't feel freer. I couldn't feel freer. Fam, this has been a joy, you know. Um, and like I you know, always say, man, it's not going to be our only conversation, but this has been an absolute joy to have this conversation, man. I always say I'm in I'm, I'm, I'm in the first seat of these conversations. But brother, man, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm with um, the thinking and, and, and how you're approaching this. But I think the medium, I heard something, I think what Kirk Franklin says something, I think at the Stellar Awards, I think it was going around the internet and he was just like, the job is not to be like a good Christian artist. <laughs> he's just like, like a good, he's just like, he's like, you're a Christian, be, be a great artist, like, just be excellent. Like, just do it yeah. well. I think similarly, yeah. it's like you being healthy, you knowing God, you being on a journey, you being clear about who you are is part of the the fruit of your Christian walk. And then that's just going to flow into everything that you do and people are going to receive. And that's right. what people are resonating with. Brother, you know, you know, as <laughs> ironically, I have to ask, I mean, how do people best connect with you? What do you have coming ahead that they can support you and get and get surrounded yeah. your own, man? You just drop the single. So, so, so keep yeah. talking. Uh, for sure. So, um, call me ace.com, uh, all social medias. I'm call me ace legit. <laughs> uh, and you know, and it was funny about the legit too. Like I did the legit just to be like, yo, I'm legit in myself. Mm. I don't need anyone's validation on my path in life, what I'm doing X, Y, and Z. So, you know, I was like, yo, I'm legit. I'm legitimately an artist just as much as I work, you know, professionally, et cetera. And now, you know, oh, the boy's verified and the boy is, you know, pressing this and that. They're like, oh, he's legit. It's like, no, nah, but I've been legit, mm. right? Legit. So that's really what, because I didn't need these things. I didn't need anyone's affirmations to tell me who I am. I already know who I am, right? So if y'all choose to connect with your boy, just know that that's the kind of uh, mentality that you'll be engaging with. Uh, every week I share principles and guidance on, you know, how to juggle your your work and, you know, your creative passions, workartbalance.com. Uh, I'm dropping a book on um, uh, how to get verified on Instagram Under with 5, under 5,000. <laughs> yeah. And that, you know, really it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's going to be a bunch of just like practical things as far as like how to engage your fan base. Um, and it's also going to be a mentality thing, right? Like at the end of the day, like it is just a string of code that creates a blue circle next to your name on the right side, but that shouldn't in any way, shape or form change the way that you identify yourself, the way that you look at other people, you know, you wear the, the check, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're going to be getting that as well in the book. Um, and then, you know, more music. Uh, I got a show coming up in the Bay, San Francisco in September. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm moving, you know. Oh, man, <laughs> you, you active, man. You, you at it, man. And, uh, uh, man, I'm, I'm thankful, man. And I, and I, and I um, will consider myself as a, as a champion of your work um, and what you're doing. I appreciate this conversation has been a gift to me, and I know it will be a blessing to so many others who will see this and who will watch this. Ace, man, like I started, all respect, all honor. Grateful, grateful, grateful Likewise. for you, man, and for for the work you're doing. Uh, I'm gonna check you out. I'm gonna come yeah. see you, bro. All right. All right, for sure. Right. Appreciate Peace. you. Thank you for having me. It's a blessing. All right, take care, y'all. Peace.